solving linear systems by substitution. I'm at home in my office, so you might hear a little echo or something right now. My air conditioner's on. Sometimes that make it makes it echo also. So uh, this is going to be part one, you guys. So let me put that up in here before I forget. Part uh, one. Tomorrow's going to be part two. We're going to be doing problem solving with this stuff. Okay, the next slides won't say part one, but this is part one. Okay. Let's go ahead and solve uh, using what we did the last lesson. Solve this system by graphing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, graph one line in red and one line in blue. And here's the slope intercept. So I'm going to go ahead and go to plus two. And then from there, I'll go up three to the right one. So there's the plus two right there. Okay, and then I'm going to go up three, one, two, three to the right one. I'm going to put another point, connect them up with the line. And then there's that red line right there. Okay, on this one right here, I think I, I solved for y. You can do the intercept method and do the zeros if you want. I think on this one I solved for y, so I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Okay, and then um, uh, so we get 2y equals negative x plus 11, then divide everything by 2. Okay, and 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. Uh, so if we go up to this 5.5, which is right here, put a point there. Okay, and then uh, we're going to use this slope right here. This time the slope is down one to the right two. So we're going to go down one, so it's going to go to 4.5 and then go to the right two. One, two. Okay, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and connect those guys up. And then right there where they intersect is uh, the solution at one comma five. Okay, graphing method uh, is usually not a, a very efficient method, you guys. Um, it works fine, but sometimes when you, when you know, it, as we saw in our class, you know, we had to kind of guess on what the answer was. Here's one way we can find the exact answer uh, without, without a doubt in here. So this is one way. It's called the substitution method. And what we're going to do is we're going to substitute, since y equals this stuff, I'm going to substitute this 3x plus 2 in for the y in the second equation right there. So, so I'm going to color code them red right there, and I'm going to put this red stuff right there where this red stuff is, because where they intersect, they share the same y. So this y that equals 3x plus 2 is going to equal this y also. Then what, what happens, you guys, is, um, so here's the 2 times y, but remember, y is 3x plus 2. Then we're going to distribute the 2 through, and we have an equation with just one variable, with just x. Okay, and we've been doing these things in class. Solve this guy now. So x plus 6x is going to get a 7x and 7x plus 4. All right, then we're going to subtract 4 from both sides, and we're going to get 7x equals 7, and so x equals 1. Okay, and then we're going to substitute x right back up there where the x is in the first equation right there. So put in 1 right there. 3 times 1 plus 2 is going to get us 5, so the answer is 1, 5. And that's the, these are the same... Uh, equations that we did in section A, you guys, so it's the same answer. Okay, when we graphed that line and then we graphed that line, they intersected at 1, 5. Okay, the substitution method is pretty slick. Okay, let's try it again with this one here. Okay, y equals 2x minus 3. So this time we're going to put in the 2x minus 3 for this y right here. Okay, so it's going to be 3 times 2x minus 3, and that's what this says over here. We're going to go ahead and distribute the, the 3 through. And we're going to get uh, x plus 6x minus 9 equals 5. And then go ahead and combine the like terms. 7x minus 9 equals 5. We're going to add 9 to both sides. And then we get 14, so x equals 2. And then we're going to go ahead and put x right back up here where this x is, okay? So we're going to plug in x equals 2 right there. So 2 times 2 minus 3 is 4 minus 3, which is 1 right there. So the answer is always an ordered pair. And we always put x first, you guys. So x comma y so it's going to be 2 comma 1 okay pretty slick huh all right this one here you guys i don't have a y equals but i almost have an x equals with this top equation if we took this top equation and added 2y to both sides watch what happens you guys i'm going to go ahead and add 2y to both sides and we get x equals 2y minus 6 so let's plug this 2y minus 6 in for the other x in the other equation right there next to the 4. So I'm going to put 4 parentheses, 2y minus 6, and then we got this plus 6y right here, and then equals 4, and then we can solve for y. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it in right there, all right, and then uh, distribute the 4 through, and then combine like terms, you guys, 8y plus 6y is 14y, 14y minus 24, okay. And, whoops, I didn't do that. There we go. And then we're going to add 24 to both sides, and we're going to get 28. 
So we're going to end up getting uh, y equals 2. Don't forget it's an ordered pair answer, so we're going to substitute in y equals 2 back into where we had x equals. Okay? So plug in y equals 2 right there. So 2 times 2 is going to be 4. 4 minus 6 is going to be negative 2. Okay? And that's going to be the, so remember, your answer is always an ordered pair. X always comes first, so this X is going to come before this Y right here. So we're going to get negative 2, comma 2 on that answer. Okay? All right, I hope that makes sense, you guys. Take care.